The title of, of my talk is addressing the problem of logical of me, omniscience sorry, by means of non-normal world semantics. Um, so the, the general idea beh behind the talk is that uh, I would like to introduce this notion of uh, logical omniscience first, uh, first and then uh, talk about what, uh, what, is, uh, what is the intuitive notion of non-normal or uh, impossible world. Um, and finally, uh, to answer uh, the question of whether we can deal with it by means of uh, non-normal world semantics, and in particular uh, with relational, uh, with, sorry, ternary relational uh, uh, se se semantics. Okay, so uh, this will be the structure of the talk. So three different points. First of all, I will talk about this notion, logical omniscience, give a general uh, context or frame framework for it. And then how um, how could we address the notion of uh, non-normal or impossible world? And uh, last but not least, uh, if there is a solution to this problem via this kind of semantics, right? Non-normal world semantics. So which will be my project uh, proposal, so to say, uh, but also to... Um, uh, to uh, review uh, briefly uh, some previous works in the literature. Uh, okay, but uh, before I start with the talk, I really wanted to point out that um, this is not actually a work in progress, um, but more uh, sort of a work to be started. So this is a, a part of uh, a, a project uh, proposal I wrote last month uh, in order to, to apply to a postdoctoral uh, uh, contract or fellowship, right? And my idea, <clears throat> the main idea behind the, the, the proposal or the project was to combine uh, what I already knew about relevance, logics, and in particular, the non-relational uh, semantics with all this um, uh, new information for me, I mean, new, new uh, subject, which is uh, uh, epistemic logics and uh, in particular, this problem of logical omniscience, right? Okay, so um, with that said, first of all, uh, um, what is this, uh, this problem? Um, Mm, by a way of uh, general context or a general framework for this, um, when I when I mean uh, when I talk about epistemic logics, which I mean is in general any uh, any logic meant to model or notions of knowledge and belief, and of course the majority of these logics uh, are uh, in fact uh, modal logics. Uh, therefore, uh, its semantics are given in terms of possible worlds uh, via Kripke models, right? Um, so we are going to find expressions like this one, um, which we can, uh, as you all know, uh, read as um, the agent A knows that, uh, that phi, right? So, uh, but I want to underline that I will, uh, will be omitting the subscript A during the presentation because um, I won't be uh, focusing on multi-agent systems or multi-agent uh, context. So yeah, I will I will omit uh, the the subscript. We will be talking just um, about in general an agent. Um, apart from that. Um, I also wanted to say that a stage of knowledge uh, is a restriction of the situation or scenarios that are epistemically possible according to the agent in question. Um, so of course, the, um, those, uh, those logics, epistemic logics are firstly due to uh, Kitika's works, right? Um, so uh, he, he tried to model uh, knowledge uh, and, belief, and belief by means of uh, relational structures in which uh, the domain uh, is a set of scenarios S 
um, ethers uh, possible world, which are in its turn closed under some so a sort of consequent relation. And um, of course, there is an accessibility relation between worlds, uh, which uh, normally, or at least firstly, uh, was taken to be as the uh, as the necessity um, model operator clause, right? Um, as it is shown on the screen on the slide. So uh, the the problem or uh, dilemma is that this consequence relation under which uh, possible worlds are closed is impossibly strong and commits us to an excessively idealized picture of human reasoning. So this is uh, what we usually know as the, what, what we usually know as the problem of logical omniscience. Um, in other words, uh, this problem means that uh, whenever an agent knows uh, all the formulas in a set gamma and b follows logically from gamma, then the agent also knows b. So when we uh, when I say that I I want to I want to avoid uh, the problem of logical omniscience. When I'm trying to say that I'm, uh, I would like to avoid this, right? And it can be uh, divided into uh, those points one and two. So uh, first case, when uh, the set gamma uh, is equal to the empty set, the agent knows all theorems, right? Um, uh, a second case, when gamma, when gamma is, uh, is a well form formula, for instance, A, the agent knows all logical consequences of that formula. So that will be uh, the two basic uh, scenarios or uh, inferences that uh, we are trying to avoid, right? Uh, in any case, this is true that these uh, models uh, that uh, indeed uh, validate these, these rules can work in some context. So for instance, in multi-agent systems where the knowledge is conceived as external to the agents, or also for instance, in contexts where we are interested in implicit knowledge of an agent uh, in, con in contrast, uh, to an explicit knowledge, right? But uh, the logical omniscience picture seems uh, problematic when we mean to model uh, the logic of an agent's explicit knowledge. So in, in Hintigas' uh, words, it is clearly inadmissible to infer he knows that Q from he knows that P, solely on the basis that Q follows logically from P for the person may fail to see that P entails Q. Um, particularly if P and Q are uh, relatively complicated statements. Uh, so to, to sum up uh, this part, this is, this is uh, the end of the first part. Um, what, um, what we are trying to avoid are, uh, so difficulties one are two, uh, that we have already seen, but also three. So the first one is the uh, closer under entailment, also known as full omniscience. The second one is the knowledge of all valid formulas. And I would like to add another one, this, this third one, which will be the um, uh, trying to avoid the consistency of knowledge. Um, because in usually uh, impossible uh, worlds framework, uh, contradictory mental states are banned. So I, I also want to, to avoid this, this third uh, uh, difficulty, so to say. <clears throat> okay, so um, as for the second part of the talk, the notion of uh, non-normal world or impossible world and uh, non-normal world semantics, right? So what it is an impossible world? The idea of impossible worlds is also due to Hintika. Um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, he thought that epistemically accessible worlds do not need to be uh, logically po 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 possible. Sorry, <clears throat> uh, but 
because there could be option which, options which look possible but uh, have hidden contradictions. Uh, so initially, um, impossible worlds were thought um, as unconstrained in the sense that uh, they were closed under no other rule uh, than identity and didn't need to be prime or, or, or consistent. Uh, however, this kind of semantics um, um, was uh, noticed to be non-useful. Um, and on the other hand, uh, I also would like to see, um, uh, to, to take a look to the uh, notion of impossible work given by Berto and Diego, and Diago, sorry. Um, uh, so they, um, they uh, gave four different approaches to the notion uh, from the more to the less uh, general algorithm there. So first of all, uh, we can think of impossible worlds as impossible, some sort of impossible ways. So ways things could not have been or ways the world could not have been. Um, a second um, think of, uh, a second way to think about uh, impossible worlds is as logic violators. So worlds where lots of logic fail. Of course, this approach depends of, on one of sorry on one what we take the laws of logic to be. Um, a third approach will be uh, thinking of them as uh, classical logic violators. So worlds where laws of classical logic fail. And the last one uh, as contradiction realizers, so worse where the law of non-contradiction does not hold, right? So, and uh, I have been uh, using both worlds, either impossible worlds, worlds or a non-normal worlds as equal, right? So, um, in as interchangeable. And then. Uh, what this is a um, non-normal world semantics for relevant uh, logics. And as I said before, I will be focusing on this kind of semantics, right? On the ternary relational uh, semantics, which was introduced by uh, Rolpli and Mayer in the early seventies of the past century, and was originally defined for interpreting uh, relevant relevance logics. Mm, but, uh, it was soon uh, noticed to be also a useful tool able of interpreting a wide range of logics such as uh, paraconsistent, intuitionistic, or uh, many valid logics. Um, this kind of semantics is, uh, um, is similar uh, to the very well-known uh, um, possible word semantics. But of course, it has some uh, particular features. So in the first place, there is a ternary relation between worlds, of course, instead of a, a binary one. Also, um, we will be using the Routley unary op op operator, which is also known as a Routley star, and is used to model uh, the negation in those, uh, in those semantics. <laughs> Um, in the third place, uh, validity is going to be defined with respect to a set, a set of regular walls, and a regular wall is uh, one which uh, validates or contain all theorems. Um, also, uh, worlds in ternary relational semantics can be both inconsistent and incomplete. <clears throat> uh, so given this, uh, of course, words in ternary relational semantics are not normal or are impossible, at least in three of the four senses that we saw before, right? So as le at least at the very least as uh, logic violators. So words where laws of logic fail uh, because uh, we have this distinction between uh, in general a world and a, 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 a regular one, a regular world. Uh, also, um, um, could be seen as impossible worlds or non-normal worlds, 
because they are classical logic uh, violators and of course uh, contradiction uh, realizers. And well, um, mm, these non-normal worlds are mm, usually uh, called also in relevant logics uh, setups. Um, and this is just to uh, to have a, a brief picture of uh, of a model in the semantics, right? So a model in ternary relational semantics will be a structure of this kind where we have a set of all worlds, say K, a subset of K, O, which is the, the set of uh, all regular worlds, then a ternary uh, relation and uh, the road restart to model the negation in those logics. Um, finally, uh, um, a relation uh, of uh, a valuation relation, sorry, which follows uh, the conditions and clauses um, shown there. Mm, uh, of course, um, conditions two and three are um, the usual ones. Uh, I mean, the usual ones are also in possible world semantics. Um, the, the particular futures are a, uh, close four and close five. So the negation and, and the conditional. Um, what we have is that uh, a conditional is true in, in a world A, if and only for all worlds. A, B, and C, such that there is a relationship between the three of them, and the antecedent of the of the conditional is true in the second of them. Then the consequence of the conditional is going to be true in the third of them, in the third element of that relation, in the third world of that relation. Um, and lastly, the 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 negation clause. And uh, oh, I I also wanted to to say that. Um, the first one is also uh, a bit, um, yeah, a bit of a, of a difference, um, and it simply says that uh, if the the information of the formulas um, in 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 A are in B and a P is a formula in A, then of course P is going to be true in or is going to uh, uh, is going to hold in. In B. Uh, so the, the interesting part of it is uh, if non-normal word semantics could be a solution to this problem, right? The problem of logical omniscience. Um, so what what I will would like to do is um, to take as a starting point a uh, relevance uh, logic um, and to expand it by means of an epistemic operator or two, I mean, one for knowledge and the other for, for belief, but for the purposes of this talk, I will be talking just about the knowledge one um, in relation to the problem to logical uh, omniscience. And apart from that, uh, once we have this, uh, this relevant epistemic logic uh, provides an unnormal world semantics for, for it. Um, in this case, uh, conditional and negation will be modeled as in <clears throat> internal relational semantics. Also, uh, validity uh, will be defined with respect to a set of regular worlds, O. And I would like to add a necessity like a condition for the knowledge operator. The only difference will be that, of course, we will, um, in this case, we will be talking about non normal words, no? even in the, in the epistemic uh, for, the, for the condition of the knowledge operator. Um, so, yes, the, the problem, the main problem is how many issues related to logical omniscience can we avoid by means of the semantics? Um, that's what I will be t t t talking about later. And, but the, uh, the idea 
or the goal uh, will also be uh, to combine these two kinds of logic, so relevant logic and epistemic logic, to model relevant epistemic agents, um, trying to, uh, to benefit from both of them. So trying to benefit from some features of relevance logics and trying to benefit from the fact that we are going to have an epistemic uh, operator from, for, for, for knowledge, right? Uh, I, I also think that an interesting uh, philosophical question uh, will be if um, will we shouldn't an epistemic agent think or work according to a relevant, relevant criteria? Uh, well, this, mm, the answer of this question is completely out of the purposes of, of the talk, but I, 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 really, I really think that it's an, an interesting question and it, um, yeah, it will be um, useful also for the, for the project uh, to answer that, right? Um, so now I, uh, I haven't planned to uh, really focus on the, on, on the proofs, but just like uh, have it there in case of need and just to, uh, to give them as a way of a sample, but uh, so yeah, briefly, um, we have this uh, one of the, the issues, right? Uh, of logic, logical omniscience, which is the knowledge of all theorems. Um, we know that in possible world semantics, uh, we, could, we can find uh, a semantical proof for it. So in this case, um, a contradiction, uh, if we proceed by reductio, uh, a contradiction will we, fi we will find, find it in step uh, three and four. Right. Uh, however, if we take a non-normal word semantics, for uh, cannot be assumed. Uh, given that uh, validity will be defined as true in our regular worlds, and we do not know whether B belongs to that set or don't or or doesn't. Right. So, uh, in the case of uh, this will be a second case. It's the case of the impossibility of inconsistent knowledge, uh, for which we also can find a, a easily a proof in uh, possible world semantics uh, when the framework has uh, the condition of seriality, right? So given that, we will find a contradiction in, in seven and nine and nine. And in the case of uh, non-normal or impossible word semantics, uh, but of course, specifically uh, the case of relational, uh, ternary relational uh, the semantics, um, we will, uh, so the proof uh, will stop in nine uh, because we will have, instead of this nine, we will have this other uh, step. Um, and we do not find a contradiction given how negation works in relevant logics, right? Uh, however, um, we will have this uh, unsolved problem in, in this semantics, this, uh, the full omniscient uh, problem, so to say. Um, because this, in this case, I, I gave the proof for, for the ternary relational uh, semantics, uh, also proceeding by reductio. And we will find uh, a contradiction uh, between year four and nine. Um, as I said before, uh, it's not my aim to go through all the proof, but I just wanted to point out that this is given uh, of how uh, basic models in ternary relational semantics works. Um, in particular, because we have this, uh, this basic uh, postulate um, that we define exactly like this. So because of that, uh, we are going to get a contradiction. So this will be the part so unsolved. Uh, and uh, I think it, 
it will take mm, more work to um, to add some some sort uh, of constraint right in the models uh, or change it in such a way that that we uh, that we actually avoid this case. Mm. Okay, yes. Um, okay, so uh, before I end, I just wanted to um, uh, to go a little briefly through uh, some previous work in, in the literature um, in relation to um, to what I'm trying to do. Uh, okay, so first we have this uh, this article, a strong relevant model. Sorry, a strong relevant logic model of epistemic processes in scientific uh, di discovery. Um, the author's goal was to construct a realistic model of epistemic, uh, as the as the title says, right? Epistemic uh, processes in scientific uh, di discovery, and um, he employs a strong relevant logics. Uh, also as a first order logic, so with, quantifi with quantificers. Um, so the, the, his main reason behind that is to, to construct uh, a programming, a new programming pa paradigm, so uh, which he uh, calls epistemic pro programming. Um, so this is uh, a, an approach which is really different from for mine, uh, he uh, does not work with ternary relational uh, semantics, and the reasons behind his project are actually also really different. Uh, in the second case, uh, we have this advancing uh, uh, paper, uh, which is called Diamonds Are Philosophers' Best Friends. Um, his goal is to define the model epistemic relevant logic. Uh, tools um, that he employs are uh, epistemic as well as modal operators and astral negation. So no denegation of relevance logic, but uh, so to say an, a normal one, a, a more, uh, you, um, yeah, a regular one. And <clears throat> And his main his main reason behind the project is to avoid uh, the the knowability paradox, uh, which which is um, yeah the the process the which um, leads us from this starting point that every through sent sorry every through sentence is knowable to every through sentences through sentence is known right so of course it uh, it is uh, related uh, i mean yeah really related with the um, with the problem of logical omniscience and the main difference uh, will be that uh, i will take uh, the negation of relevant logics um, um, I, I am I do not intend to uh, to work with both modal and epistemic operator, but just uh, a, an epistemic one. And the, the third the third uh, the third case uh, is uh, is the most uh, similar um, to what I, I, I wanted to do. Um, and it's based on this work uh, relevant agents. Mm, the wall of the paper was uh, uh, <coughs> sorry to have a representation of epistemic states of a non-omniscient non -om rational agent. And the tools uh, they take uh, are um, the, rel the strong relevance uh, logic R and also a modal epistemic operator. Um, but the operator uh, they they uh, they take uh, is defined uh, by means of this uh, 
of this clause, which is uh, uh, similar to, 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 to the diamond one, right? Uh, in modern logics, um, he and um, uh, finally, the reason is to provide an intuitively acceptable interpretation. Sorry, interpretation of relational frames for relevant logic using a definition of the epistemic operator, which naturally follows from this interpretation. So in this case, uh, I would like to take as a starting point, probably a weaker relevance logic. And um, also, as I, as I think I said before, I I will try to go with a, a, a modal epistemic operator necessity like, right? Um, so in, in in this case, it works really well because they the interpretation they have for uh, uh, for the world they they see them as uh, sources of information, and maybe we can say that they, they have a, a weaker sense of knowledge because they uh, they interpreted uh, an agent as having knowledge. Uh, whenever they have, whenever uh, he or she have, has an, um, at least one source that uh, uh, just one uh, that provides uh, with an, uh, provides him with an inf inf information. Um, so in this sense, I, I think it's a, maybe it's a, a, a weaker. Uh, definition or a weaker sense of of knowledge that the one I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to pursue or to get yeah um so yes that that will be the the difference between what I'm trying to do and the um the things that we can already already um study in from the previous uh literature and I think that will be all. <laughs>